Okay, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to my talk about KXEC KDump. I want to, I will try to explain you a bit how KXEC KDump works. Uh, my name is Matthias Brugger. I work at SUSE as a Linux kernel engineer and uh, I work mainly on ARM64. <laughs> and um, uh, I looked into KXK dump uh, for the for enablement for uh, SLE 12 SP3, and uh, well, yeah, then I thought that it would be nice to do a talk about it. And it took me a while to actually find the time uh, find, to find find the time, and now now it's the moment. So uh, what I will talk about, I will give a quick overview of the use cases. Then we will have a look into the internals of user space and kernel. We will look about the special support in OpenSUSE. I will do a demo and we have some questions. Well, you have some questions. I have some answers, hopefully. Okay, uh, the use cases. So first use case uh, is boot a new kernel without rebooting a machine. So I come from an embedded uh, background. So that for me was a really strange use case because in embedded you just boot up all the time when you, for example, develop. But uh, when you have uh, like bigger systems like big servers and it can take quite a while for the firmware to enumerate all the devices and then it makes uh, it might make sense to just reboot the kernel without rebooting the whole firmware, or you have uh, like pre-production firmware which is not stable enough, and you don't want to risk to reboot the whole machine and then have a broken firmware. Then the, the second use case is to debug a system. I think this is the principal motivation why this was implemented in the first place. And uh, that's um, we, at SUSE we use it uh, uh, we use it to debug kernel crashes that happens in, uh, at uh, our customers. We have a lot of different customers with different hardware, and it's, we don't always um, have uh, good logs because maybe uh, there's no serial console uh, or the logs are broken because the kernel crash is uh, so bad or we don't have a reproducer in-house because it's some legacy code in, in the client that actually provokes a crash and we need to understand uh, uh, how this happens. So we can use KXK dump for that. I will explain in the rest of the, the presentation, I will explain the use case for debugging a system because the other one is, is a bit different and uh, I, uh, I decided to, to look into this more in detail. Uh, and the last one is to boot your system, which is for me it sounds like totally crazy and that is what S390 is doing when booting a system, they do KXEC in the end. Well, Okay, uh, some comments first. So uh, there are different ways to talk about the production system and the capture, capture kernel or crash kernel or panic kernel. So I will talk about the production kernel or production system in a capture kernel or capture system. And the idea is that the, the capture system gets booted when the production system crashes. So to make it more graphical, you have uh, here, this is a really crappy graphic I made, but anyway, it's good enough. It shows you like the memory of the system and then the arrow shows you that the production kernel is running and then the production kernel crashes and then the capture kernel gets started and the capture kernel creates somehow a dump file with the memory of uh, the production system. So that's, that's how, it, how it works. And uh, which parts are involved? Well, we have a user space part. The most important tool or the most important project is KXEC tools, which is used to prepare the capture system and somehow load it into, into the, to, somehow load it so that it can boot it when the production system crashes. Then we have, of course, the kernel itself. Uh, there are some other user space tools to inspect the dump, like make dump file or crash or crash Python. Um, I won't explain and I won't go into detail about these tools. You can have a look uh, uh, via the main page. And, that le and then there are some distro, pro dis distro programs to make it easier to set things up. 
uh, sets things up. And in the case of OpenSUSE, that's called kdump with, uh, yeah. So KXEC tools, um, uh, KXEC tools has several tools. The most important one is called KXEC. And uh, you can see here how you can, for example, lo load a, a kernel with an init RD and you just use the, command, the kernel command line from the uh, production system. And you have uh, different possibilities to use it. So you can just, if you want do the first um, use case to just boot a new kernel, then you would use dash L for load the system, and then afterwards you do a dash E, kxec dash E, which will reboot in the new kernel, better than unmount your file systems so that, that they don't get um, damaged. And this will basically call reboot with a magic number in the kernel, and the kernel then realizes that it shouldn't reboot, but just reboot uh, a, new, a new kernel and not the whole system. Uh, apart from that, you can unload a loaded kernel and uh, you could have some ar ar architecture-specific options like device tree for ARM64. Okay, so remember how this works. So the capture system takes the memory of the of the production system and creates a dump file. So the question is, how can the capture system do this? What does it need? Well, what we need when the production system crashes is we need a capture kernel. We know, know we need to know where the capture kernel is in the memory to load it. We need uh, to know which memory we can use for the capture kernel because if we would use just the memory used by the production system, then we could overwrite some values that interesting to analyze, and um, uh, we, we, we need some user space for the capture system, and we need to know where, the, where actually the memory of the production system is so that we can uh, create the dump. And uh, to do this, what we do is, I made a, a small crappy graphic down here, which is like the, memory, the whole memory of your machine. And then you reserve, uh, which is the gray area, you reserve some uh, memory space via the crash kernel equals some megabytes to um, where, where the capture system will live in. And you take this memory away from the, your production system. So it can be a bit tricky to decide how big this uh, memory area should be. You don't want it to be too big to waste memory for something that you, don't, uh, that you hopefully never, you never need. <laughs> And, uh, but don't make it too small because then maybe your uh, capture system uh, does not come up. So uh, there are some tools that can help you. Uh, I will show you later. And uh, you can see in this um, reserved area, the, we have, there are different segments like ELF core header kernel in it, the device tree in purgatory, which, uh, which get loaded into the um, into the reserved uh, memory, and then the part here in the end that would be like the memory that actually the capture system can use of the boot. And uh, these segments, that is how they are called, uh, have uh, this structure, which is a shared structure between the user space and the, and the kernel. And for example, in the case of the capture kernel, when you load this with, with KX with KXEC tools, what it does, it copies it allocates a buffer of the size of your kernel in user space and copies uh, your kernel in there and then it looks in the reserved region where it can find a page aligned hole to uh, reserve this for your kernel. And uh, so in the end you have like a buffer with, uh, in user space you have a bu buffer with your kernel and you have uh, a pointer to the memory which would be pointing here and the size. Okay. Ah, yeah. Okay. So sorry. And that was, this is this is for kernel and init RD. That's it. What you what KXEC tool do, does. The elf core header device tree in purgatory is a bit different, and I will go more into detail now about this. <coughs> so the elf core header um, is an elf an elf header or an elf file which holds the information about the production memory. And uh, with this information, the a uh, capture system later can create the uh, proc vm core, which is a dump file that you can then copy somewhere and inspect what really happened uh, in your system. 
And uh, yeah, this works like this, that you have an elf, header, an elf header, and then you have program headers, which points, for example, here to your production kernel, or which points to the memory. And uh, there are different, different program headers, one for each CPU, which points to the crash nodes of each CPU, which is a memory region in your production system where the production system will store information about CPU state pits, CPU registers, so that in the end you have an exact pic picture of what happened in every CPU at, at the moment of the crash. And then, um, yeah, KXIC tools can read the address via the sysfs and uh, then write the address into the program header and the size, and that's it. VM uh, core is um, a data structure in the kernel, which is used to describe how the kernel looks like. So it's for debug information, so you can, for example, see page size, so you can see uh, the offset of the flex in struct page, how big is a struct, etc. And that's uh, necessary to later be able to analyze the kernel part of the memory dump. And uh, yeah, that's also copied, uh, stored somewhere in the in the in the production uh, in the production system memory, and you can read this with this kernel VM core info. Um, then, uh, uh, then what you also need, of course, is the yeah, real memory that your uh, production system has. So, what Elf uh, KXEC tool does, it reads PROC IO mem and uh, decides which parts of this are system RAM by a string, <laughs> string compare. So, nothing really elaborated, and uh, yeah, and then points to that. Um, okay. So that's about Elf Core header. This information, as I said, is then used to create uh, the dump file, and then in the capture system you can read read that. Um, okay, let's talk about the next one here, which is device tree. Uh, device tree is a is a description language for uh, hardware, how the hardware looks of your machine. It's used by PowerPC and by ARM. And uh, ARM64 uh, is able by by specification is able to boot uh, device with device tree or with ACPI. But there are some some people uh, that push the vendors to do ACPI only. So there are machines that are ACPI only. And then to be able to to use device tree for um, for KX and KDump. You have a sys firmware FDT in ARM64, which gives you a minimal device tree. We can, I can show you that later, which has just the UEV mem map where the init ID uh, is allocated and uh, the kernel will boot parameter. And uh, what um, KXEC tools does, it reads this device tree. It updates uh, the location of the init RD, which then points to the init RD, which is here in your reserved area. It adds a pointer to the ELF core header, and it uh, tells the system uh, where the usable memory is. And with this device tree later, uh, the capture system knows everything it needs to know. OK. Uh, Uh, I don't know exactly, to be honest. <laughs> I think it simply fails, but I'm not sure. Have you tried? It? Yes, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's only the UEFI memory map, so I, th I suppose they translated somewhere. But I don't. I haven't had a look on the code exactly how this is done. Um. I mean, I, I don't think that it's that they prove that the firmware, apart from that, the provides a device tree because that most probably won't work. I mean, it would work, but because of human error, it most probably won't work. So, uh, okay. Uh, last bit we need to, for our capture system is the purgatory. 
So the purgatory decides over heaven and hell, and uh, heaven is uh, when the when you are able to uh, boot the capture system, and hell is when your system is so broken that you can't do it. And what purgatory on ARM64 does, basically, it checks all the segments, all the other segments, not its own, but all the others, and uh, checks for the hash sum to see uh, that, the, that these segments are not um, changed in any way and uh, that it's uh, safe to boot uh, the capture system. There's also, in the newest version of KXIC tools, a command to ignore these checks which is really nice because it means purgatory sends you always to heaven. So, <laughs> Okay, then the purgatory, after, after doing the checks and saying everything's okay, it uh, loads the kernel and the device tree into registers and jumps to the kernel. And we can, can you see this? Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay, so this is the purgatory in ARM64. I deleted some lines, but basically it's... Uh, Really easy assembly, so it has some stack. So the stack is down here, and uh, it loads the stack, and then it jumps to purgatory, which is a C, f a C function, which just does this uh, hash check, and then it loads the kernel entry point in the device tree address into registers, zero some other registers, which is like the standard way to boot ARM64, and then jumps to the kernel. And what KXEC tool does with this file, it updates uh, these two values to actually point to the kernel and to the device tree. So in the end, what we have to get all this information, to get all the uh, to get all the information, the purgatory is like the first program that gets executed when the system crashes. He knows where the kernel is and where the device tree is, and the device tree has pointers to the ELF core header, init RD, and the usable memory for the system. And the kernel will use the device tree to boot up and, and, uh, and get the system running. Okay, so that's all what KXEC does. It does, pro uh, it does create all these, uh, these segments, and then it passes the segments to the um, to the kernel, and this is done via a syscall, it's called kxec load. There's another co uh, call which is kxec file load, where you just pass the kernel and the init rd to the, to the production kernel, and then the production kernel does all this stuff for you. This is not yet implemented on ARM64, there are some patches on the mailing list, but it's uh, not ready, and I, I, so I was looking into the kxec load case. And in the kxec load case, what KXEC tools passes to the kernel is the entry points of the purga the entry point of the purgatory and the number of the segments you have and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, well an, an array in the end an array of this of KXEC segments and uh, the number they are how many are in the array. Okay, so that's a, that's the user space part, and now go we get to the kernel part, which is shorter. So, <laughs> um, okay, so kernel internals, uh, I will talk about three parts in the kernel internals. So we have the part where, uh, how does this capture system get loaded while the production system still is uh, up and running, which is CK exec load syscall. Then what happens when the production kernel crashes and then what happens when the capture kernel boots up. Okay, loading the capture kernel. So first of all, the kernel does some checks so that you're really rude to do this, uh, that you don't have too many segments in your, uh, and that you want to pass because you can only pass 16. And when all this is okay, then it creates a structure which is called k-image, and which holds the k exec segments with the information from user space. It holds a purgatory entry point, which you also got from user space, it allocates a, mem a memory page for uh, as a control page, which will be used to actually start the purgatory. We will see that in a minute. And um, it will also do a copy of the VM, VM core info and uh, hold this. I'm not quite sure why he does this. I suppose it is because uh, if VM core info gets uh, damage, then you have a copy. But I'm I'm not sure. I, uh, I'm not really sure why they why the kernel do, does this. Okay, 
So once this is done, it will check all the segments and it will check that they're not overlaying, overlap, that they are page aligned, that they're all in the crash memory area and the reserved uh, memory area that we allocated. And it will check that uh, the memory, so the pointer to the memory has, uh, of course, a size and that this is bigger or the same as the user space buffer size because it, it can be bigger because it's page aligned. So, well, the buffer is not page aligned. And what it also does check, and which is not checked in KXEC tools, and I was surprised to find this, is that it checks that the memory of all segments, the size of the memory of all segments translated to pages, is smaller or the same as the total RAM pages divided by two. So, if KXEC fails, it could be this. And it doesn't give any error, just gives a, well, it just, just returns without any log message or anything. Okay. When these checks are all passed, we are, low, we are actually copying, copying the data, the segments. So we have the, we have the, the, the data and we have the, the, the address in the capture and the reserved memory area where to copy this. So we use copy from user to copy this page by page. And after that, we clear the PTE valid bit for all the for all these uh, pages so that they uh, can't be accessed by the system by accident. Okay, and that's it. With this, we we are actually done. When the kernel crashes. It checks that a, a crash kernel got loaded, and then when it gets loaded, the first what it does is it disables the IRQs and saves the CPU register, register on the crashed CPU. Then it writes the time to the VM core info so that you know at which time the crash happened, and then it sends an interprocess interrupt to uh, interprocessor interrupt to all the uh, other CPUs to which is CPU crash stop and which and these other CPUs basically what they do they also save the uh, registers to their uh, crash nodes we saw, we saw in the elf core header disable the local uh, IRQs and then call uh, CPU die uh, to the, uh, in the firmware where is PC, PSCI is a power con a power system for arm 64 which basically shuts down the CPUs then it checks that all CPUs are actually down because sometimes this doesn't um, work that good. And uh, if, if not all the CPUs are down, it gives uh, some, some warning, but it doesn't stop anyway because yeah, it's already everything lost. So <laughs> um, it copies a, a relocation code to the control page. That's what, they, what it was uh, allocated before. Uh, it shut down the MMU and disable the caches, and then it uh, actually starts a relocation code, which is ARM64 relocate new kernel in the case of ARM64. And then um, this is an assembly file which basically checks if the relocation is needed. In the case of um, a crash kernel, it's not needed, and it jumps directly to the purgatory, which we have seen before. And then the purgatory starts up and uh, knows through the device tree, but what he has to do to the device stream kernel, sorry. Okay, then the, kernel, then the kernel starts, the purgatory starts a kernel. The kernel knows through this uh, device tree information in its DTB where the ELF core header lies, where the usable memory is and where the init RD starts. So it can start the init RD and can create then from the ELF core header the dump file, uh, how he does this, well, he reserves some memory and he copies the pointers from the, from the ELF core header into, into this file, into this file, and uh, it has a special read function. So when you from user space in the capture system actually read, um, read this file, then actually you will copy the memory of the system and not beforehand. Okay. Oh, I'm really, I'm really quick. Uh, distribution part. So setting all this system up is a bit tricky because you have several 
things you have to think about. So first of all, you have to know the reserved memory you need, which depends on your system RAM, on your init RD size, etc. And so your init RD shouldn't be too big, but it should hold all the tools you need. And all the tools you need is apart from the tools to somehow copy the uh, dump file that depends on where you want to copy the dump file. So you can copy the dump file to a local disk or you can copy it to a remote uh, machine. Um, and if you need, uh, of course, you will need then need the drivers for the, the uh, for the <coughs> for the for the disk and for the file system, or you will need the network stack, etc. So it's not so, not so easy to make a, a, a the init RD. And the and the last thing is you can decide: do you want to reboot to the production system after the crash, or do you want to uh, stay in the in the capture system? So most probably you want to reboot because you need your system up and running and uh, you hope that the crash doesn't appear too quick afterwards. Okay, to do this we have uh, the SUSE KDump um, program or set of tools which basically has two parts, which is a, a part for the production system, though this helps you with some Rakut scripts to create the init RD it helps you to execute the kexec, the kexec, um, the kexec call, and it also as a, as a tool to helps you approximate the size of the reserved memory, the size of the reserved memory area that you will need. And on the other hand, uh, when the capture system started, this kdump tool also provides some services, so you can create beforehand a configuration file to say where you want to uh, store the, the dump and uh, if you want to, for example, um, compress the dump, etc. Or what you want to store in the dump. So, and uh, if you're really lazy, then you use just 2 kdump, which is your friend, because uh, it's really easy to set this up. So we can see here, for example, in the dump filtering, you can, you can read this, right? So you can, for example, here say, what you want to include in the dump, if you want to include free pages or pages filled, by, uh, filled with zero, which makes your dump file bigger, or uh, if you don't care about this, or if you want to compress the file, you can, in dump target, you can say where you want to uh, store it, you can create some email notifications, so you get an email, hey, you have some problem, so that's nice. Um, Okay, uh, we don't have too much time, but I wanted to do a really quick demo. So let's see how this works. Okay, uh, can you read this more or less? When we boot it up, it's booting. Okay, so I this is on virtual machine on my laptop, which is uh, unfortunately using build root, but it uh, should do its trick to just show you. So we can see, for example. Mm, that we have uh, around 1.8 gigabyte of RAM. You can see, for example, proc. Up. We can see here uh, that we have several uh, memory areas with system RAM, which is then used by KXIC tools to decide where the where the RAM uh, is uh, uh, is present on the system. We can see that we have a reserved memory area of 108 megabyte, yeah, which is this crash kernel, which is here in I/O memory presented as crash kernel. Okay, so I pre prepared these. So what we will do, we will load a panic kernel or a crash kernel. We will ignore the checks because we don't have so much time, and uh, we will append to the command line max CPUs so that we don't have one CPU, so we will only uh, start one CPU and not two, because right now we have two CPUs. Okay, and now I will try to show you the device tree that's created from ACPI. Okay, so you can see here, this is the device tree, so we have just the Linux UEFI map, 
and then you have a map, and then we have the init ID and the boot arguments, and that's it. Okay, so let's load the system, and now we can artificially crash our system. So by, by writing C2 proxies, uh, proxies or Q trigger, you crash your system. Oh. oh, you have to shout. <laughs> I don't know why this happens. Uh, oh, that's that's a pity. Well, uh, now we are we are uh, we are now in the capture system. So if we can see now that we have 147 megabytes of RAM because some is uh, uh, some is needed for the KX6 segments, we can see that we only have one one CPU. Okay, so this is the device tree. And you can see that we have uh, here Linux 11th 11 core header. And we have the usable memory here. So last thing I want to do, there's some program called VM Core Dimask. Ah, no, I want to do something else. Proc VM core is a dump file, and you can see the dump file is 1.8 gigabyte because it's the memory that we have in our production system. Of course, you don't, you most probably are not interested in all the memory. That's why you can with make dump file actually actually decide which uh, w what you want to see. And uh, just to show you, there's one program that's called VM core demask which will read the kernel log from your crashed system. And so you pass in the dump file, and you will see that uh, the system and the system crashed. Uh, 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 where it is? Here. SysRQ trigger a crash. So that's when we crashed our system. So it works. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really quick now, so references, uh, we, I put some information in here, so where the KX tools, you, where you can find it, some information, some documentation from SUSE, uh, from OpenSUSE, uh, about how to set the things up, the KDAM tool from OpenSUSE, and uh, if you didn't understand what I explained, there is a nice blog from some guy from Red Hat, which explains more or less the same that I do, that I found in my research. And uh, yeah, we, we, we will stop. We will quit the t uh, takeaways. And uh, any questions? That goes via PSC. Well, that goes by normal reboot. We just put reboot and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. No, you have the UFI system table, you have from the production, from your. You have the UEFI system table in the in the device tree, so you get that from production system. You don't touch this. You just add some. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah. 
yes, can, it can happen. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I I don't know. I can't tell you. Sorry. Anyone knows? Any anyone has more experience? No. Okay. I mean, what I can say is, uh, when you set these up, you should first try with uh, you, with an artificial crash that really your your crash uh, the, your capture system boots up. It's 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 not trivial to to get these running. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you, if you, huh? Oh, there is, uh, no, but there is uh, this description. In the, in the documentation from SUSE, there's a formula to calculate how much memory you will need in the reverse, in the reserve memory. So it depends how many CPUs you have and stuff. Yes, exactly. Which is part of the KDump tool from SUSE. Uh, No, a uh, cr crash, crash kernel relocation happens when you just uh, just um, want to reboot a new kernel, because then you don't have you don't have a memory region. Um, sorry. I think, I think the problem is, in when you have k exec load, then you don't have any reserved memory, so you have to copy the kernel somewhere. But maybe you will need it on a different. Uh, yeah, but well. When, okay, sorry. This memory is uh, is reserved and used if you load a, a capture kernel with dash p. If you load that kernel to just reboot to a new kernel without any crash, then you use dash l and then it works differently. You don't use, you don't need, you don't need the reverse reversed memory uh, and I uh, don't use it. But uh, I'm I, I I'm not 100 percent sure percent sure how this works to be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you can if you if you set up your init RD to store the um, to store the the dump file on a remote machine. That uh, that's possible, and then you don't touch the uh, your local uh, file system, and then you can have a look on the dump and on the file systems to check what happened. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Well, as far as I know, there's no solution for that. So you have to decide. <laughs> I think I think the problem is you don't have any. As well, 
I think it's difficult. I mean, you would have to know in the capture system why your system crashed. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes, but uh, I mean, the, yeah, the, the, I mean, uh, the, the possibility would be to read the 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 log, the kernel kernel log from your crashed uh, system, and then try to identify if it's a file system or if it's something else. It's possible, but might be painful. <laughs> Maybe we could get back to the original set. You had dived into this topic because you made this work for Celestial SDK. Yes. So, how much of this should be first or needs to be re implemented for the new one? Is that the mapping of like CPUs to those structures? I mean, uh, for it's uh, so on in the KXIC tools, I have like an architecture part which basically does all the loading of the kernel and the unit RD and creating all the elf core header. Well, the, creating the elf core header is uh, is generic, but you, I think, the most important thing that you have to. Uh, the most important thing what, what you have to think about is how to do this, right? How to how to pass information to the kernel. So on ARM64 we use device tree. I don't know how it is done on, on Intel, for example. I have no idea how they do it. Then, for example, when they implemented this on ARM64, there was a long discussion if they can add ELF core header as a device tree, in, uh, as a device tree property. Other systems use elf core header in the boot command line. I don't know why in ARM they didn't do they didn't do that. That would be a possibility, and yeah. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much.